Welcome to Fun with Science, Engineering, and Technology. My name is Mr. Ross, and today we're going to investigate one of the simple machines, pulleys. They're a very fascinating subject, and they're used all over uh, every, in our everyday life, so it should be very interesting. My assistants this morning are... Waldemar Hillis. And Ronnie. And Ronnie. All right, so what we're going to do uh, is, uh, just like I said, just a few experiments with uh, some pulleys. Ronnie, what do we have over here anyway? We have a whole bunch of stuff. You know what it is? Hold, sort of hold it up. And this is a spring scale. And we have how many of those? We have, we have two spring scales. We have uh, a meter stick. Meter stick. Yeah, well, on you know, the one side, it's it's like a yard stick. It has inches. And on this side, it has centimeters. All right, we have two of those. And we have, uh, what is that? It's a pulley, right? Yeah, this is a sort of a pulley. Yeah, so we have two of those. We have two pulleys. What else we got? A st string. Some string. Some paper clips. Paper Everybody clips. has to have paper clips, right? Yeah. This is play doh Clay. Clay. Clay, right? Yeah, what else? Are you missing something? How about, how about those black things here? And these are. Mass weights, right? They're, they're yeah, little we weights, right? Yeah, we weight them on. And that thing there is a what? The, um, the weight. That's a, this, this is a s s digital scale, actually. It's a very accurate digital scale. All right, so we have, we have two kinds of scales. We have the spring scale, and we have this digital scale. Now, this spring scale, right, it has, it has two sides to it. One over here says grams, right, where it goes from zero up to 1,000 grams. And then this other side is... What's that? Newtons. Newtons, right? And it Newtons. goes from zero to 10. All right, and sometimes when we want to measure force, we need and use some of the formulas, we need to measure it in Newtons. Or we can measure force either in Newtons or grams. But some, for some of the experiments, we do it in Newtons. All right, and if you look at the scale, all right, 100 grams is how many Newtons? One. One Newton. 200 grams would be? Two. 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 All right, so what we're going to do is over there we have an apparatus stand and I have it rigged up with some paper clips on it. And what I want you to do, Ronnie, is take one of the pulleys, right, and why don't you take the one with the string, it'll probably be a little bit easier. This one? And why don't, you, why don't you help him a little bit? Ronnie and Waldemar, what I want you to do is I want you to take that stand and one of the pulleys and set up this arrangement here, like this. Okay. So what's happening? Well, well the <coughs> nothing, right? No. <laughs> right. That, that 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 believe it or not, that machine has a has a name. It's called an Atwood machine, right? And it's named mm -hmm. after Sir George Atwood, who back in 1787 used that machine, right, to check on acceleration, how fast things would start moving and how fast they were accelerated by gravity. All right, we're gonna use it for a little different purpose today. And if you look at it, Ronnie, was is, is it other than things just swinging back and forth because we're bouncing the floor a little bit? Is it is it doing anything? No. Nope. Just nothing's going up and down or no. whatever. All right, what I want you to do, and why is that? Because, because they both weigh the same. They both weigh the same. Both of those weights are the same, so we got the same force pulling down on each side, and it balances up. All right. So what I want you to do is I want you to take a little piece of clay and put it on one of them. All right. Let's see if it starts to move. Stick it on there. Stick it on there, yeah. Did it move? Yeah, that one went up. Well, yeah, but it's because you pushed it up. But, I mean, is it moving now? No. 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 All right, but it, that one with the clay on it was going to weigh a little bit more than the one with without the clay, right? So there should be more force pulling down on that string yeah, than there is on the other one. Right? Oh. But it's not moving yet. Here, put some more on it. Still not going down. Wonder why that is. You have any idea why that might be? Yeah, because I think the clay is too light. You think the clay is too light, but it, but if there's a little bit more force on this one going than there down. is over here, it should be going down. And we got some more force on it. And why isn't it going down? Here, let's try some more. 
I got, I got, to, I got. To leave, leave that one alone. All right. You're not having much success, Ronnie. Oh. Still not going down. Maybe it's because I'm putting it all in one spot. That's okay. That's all right. It's. <sighs> You can't drop all the science experiments on the floor. Right. A little bit more. No, it's still not enough? It moved a little. It moved a little? Let's, see. Let's try some more. <clears throat> oh, it's moving. There it's going, all right? Okay, so finally, after we got enough clay on there, I added enough extra weight on that one side, it started moving. Give me the clay a minute. Let's take and move it up. Yeah, all of it. All right. So let's see how much clay we had to add. All right, I have this digital scale, and it's set up to measure grams. So what do we, what do we have to add? 21 grams. We had to add 21 grams. In other words, we had to put 21 grams more weight on that one side to make it move. If we take this 21 grams and we put it over here, right now they're, they're standing still, right? If you take and put it over here, what's going to happen? That's how you get all down. That's how you can go up. <coughs> it's going to go the other way, right? Okay, why does this just stand still when the two weights are exactly the same? Because, what does it stay still? Why does it stay still, yeah, when the two weights are exactly the same? Why do... Why would I just put just a little bit on there that doesn't move? Probably because... They still... They still <coughs> this side weighs a little bit more than that side. Why doesn't it move it? You got more gravity force pulling down on this side. But I think that... Because... That, um, um, that I think that this still, <coughs> that this still weighs the same, um, the same as this, either with or without, with the clay. You think so? No. You think that weigh, they I both think weigh... Even if I put this on it, it weighs the same? <coughs> All right, it weighed 240. Now that weighs 243, right? Oh, it's just gained three pounds. I think it's because the clay doesn't have no effect on it. It doesn't have no effect on it. Only has the effect on well, this. There's a lot. Well, it doesn't have any effect. Well, look. What's it weigh? 240. 240. I put the clay on it. 243. 243. So, if I were to hang this up here right now, both of these things weigh the same. That weighs 240. Oh, All right. The, this one now weighs two forty three. Why isn't it going down? I think it, it like move. It moves like a like three more grams. <laughs> that, like it, um like mm -hmm. it goes down like a little bit more. It went. Yeah, it went down a little. So they gained three more grams. You want to add some more? It goes down more than before. It's not moving. No, it's not going down. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> the reason it's not moving is because of something very, very important. Gravity? Well, gravity is pulling down on both sides, all right? And it's pulling down on this one a little more than this, all right? There's a little more gravitational force, or not more gravitational force, but this weighs more than that. So this string is being pulled a little bit more than that string. The what? The thing into this? It's not moving, right? And <clears throat> the reason it's not moving is because this pulley is not very good, right? If we take it, take one of these pulleys and go like this, what happens to it? If I spin it, what happens? Like slows down. It slows down and stops. Why? When you did the go karts. Right, and they slow down and stop. Why did they slow down and stop? Cause we, cause we had to rewind it again. Yeah, but why did it stop? Why didn't it just keep going? Because why it stopped? The wheels. No, it stopped cause the rubber band um just just like wasted. Okay, they wasted. Yeah, they the rubber band. But then it, but you had it going pretty good with the rubber bands, all right? Why didn't it just keep on going? Why doesn't it? Why when I take this and I go like that? Why doesn't that keep on going? Hmm. Very important thing is the reason you got, were able to get to school this morning. 
And it was the reason that when you I got to school, force? you could stop and stay here. I think because they don't have force. No. Because you can't go on forever. Take your hands and go like this. What happens? What is? What happens? What happened to your hand? What happens? I get hot. It gets hot. Why? Because of the friction. Friction. Right? Friction, right? When there's two, these two things rubbing, your hands rubbing together, right? It's friction, right? And friction, you take your car, and you get your car going, and you, big car, right? And you push it, and it gets going. And the reason it slows down and stops, it'll eventually slow down and stop unless it's going downhill, right? It's because the friction stops friction, it. Friction stops it, right? The heat. When, you, when, you, when you're driving along, you want to stop the car, and you hit the brakes, what stops it? The, the friction. The friction, the friction right? If it's on ice, what happens to the friction if we're on the ice? It keeps on going. There's not much friction on when we're, uh, we're driving on the ice. So if you try to stop, it keeps right on going. Okay. Why does it get moving to begin with? Why can, why can I walk across the floor like this? If, it was, if this floor was all icy and I tried to walk, what would happen? Yes, they would slip. Say, yes. My feet would slip, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So now then. Because there's friction between the floor and my, my shoes and my feet and all that sort of thing, I can go across, I can be walking along like this. And when I get to where I want to go and I want to stop, I can stop. All because of friction. No. In our little machine that we have over there, right, <coughs> there's friction in this pulley. And the reason reason it slows down and stops when I spin it is because of the friction. Right. So now then the reason, even though this weighs more than that one. Right, and there's more force pulling down on this side than there is over here. The reason it's not moving is because of the friction. The friction. The friction. Right, so not enough. If I, add, if I add enough weight here to overcome the force of the friction, what's going to happen? It goes on the other side. It's going to go down. And how much was weight was that? This is 20. 21 grams, right? Yeah, 21. If that were a real good pulley, right? And it had, it had ball bearings in here, and it was all lubricated real good, right? And we reduced the friction, then it wouldn't take 21 grams. It may only take four or five grams to make it, make it move, right? But so our, our pulleys, right, these are not really real good pulleys. They're all right for our purposes, right? But they have some friction in them. Okay, so that's called an Atwood machine, and it's not moving because why? Because it's having weight. Because the two the weight, two yeah. weights are equal, right? And the friction. And if I can add weight to one side, I have to add enough to overcome the friction before friction. it starts moving. All right. So what we want to do now <coughs> is we want to change our arrangement a little bit, and we want to hook up one of these. You didn't know you were going to have to work so hard, did you? Huh? Alright. Hang the weight down like that. Now, so we have we have a one pulley, we have a couple spring scales here, and we have the weight down on the bottom. Now what was what is the weight on this? Two hundred and forty. Two hundred and forty? Mm-hmm. Or about two two fifty. Alright, this is this scale is much more accurate than the spring scales. Right? But <laughs> 240. All right, so now let's. If you try to pick me up, all right, I weigh 220 pounds, mm -hmm. okay, and you're gonna try to lift me. What are you gonna have to do? You're gonna have to lift 220 pounds, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put all my strength. Yeah, no, but both of you try to pick me up, all right, and if you both work the same same amount. Right, you're gonna lift how much? You're gonna take 220 and yeah, you're gonna lift half of it, right? Which would be 110, and you're gonna lift half 110, right? So if the two of you get a hold of me, and each of you are gonna lift half of it, right? Those two scales over there, <laughs> this weighs what? We say this was 240, 240. 240 grams. How many grams are reading on that scale on the left? 125. About 120, 125, 125, all right. What's this one read over here? 125. Hmm? About 120, I think. 25. 150. About 150, all right. 
the scales, those are not real accurate scales, all right, because well, there have been a lot of students playing with them, right? But they both weigh about 100 and 120, right? The scale reads 120, this one reads 120. And that's what we say that down there? Mm -hmm. 240, right? Mm -hmm. We know that the weight is 240. So each one of these strings then is supporting half the weight. All right? Mm -hmm. So now then, let's do what, let's do a thing. Let's take out one of the scales. Take, let's take this one out. Right. Because we, right. Now then, took a spring scale out. <coughs> What's that one weigh? Measure. The same. The same. Mm -hmm. Where did the other 120 go? That one weighs 100, it's measuring 120. Where's the, where's the other 120? On this side. On that side, right. We, don't, we just don't have a, happen to have a scale in there to, to measure it. So. But there's 120 grams of force on here. There's 120 grams of force there. Okay. So now then, if you were going to use that pulley system to lift something up, right? You, well, how much force would you have to lift to, to use the pill pull something up? Let's um, say, let's say for a moment this was a hundred pounds, right? Yeah. How much force would you have to put over here to pick it up? To make that up? Yeah, yeah. If it were a hundred pounds. Okay. All right. So now, then, Ronnie, you said what? What did that weigh? What did it measure? No, About 120, all right, and this is 240, 240 grams, and all right, that reads 120. So the force required to hold that up is half of half the, the load, oh. right? <clears throat> so now then, let's say if this were 100 pounds, right, how much force would you take to hold it up? Half. Half, which would be? 50 pounds. 50 pounds, right. Okay, so now, I guess this is something called mechanical advantage. Right, it's an it's an advantage some of these machines have, right? Which says, what what mechanical advantage we have right now is two, and what that says is it takes half of the load, load to raise it to hold it up, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If the mechanical advantage were four, it would take one fourth of the load to hold it up, right? So. Now, an easy way to figure out what the mechanical advantage is, rather than measure it and so forth, is to look at how many strings, or how many ropes, or whatever we're using to hold on the pulley, right, to hold, that holds the load down here. How many, how many strings do we have holding the load? Two. Two. So the mechanical advantage were, is two. Yes. Right, if we had three strings holding the load up, the mechanical advantage would be? Three. 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 Right, very good. All right, so let's change this now. And do a little different arrangement. Take this off of here. I'm gonna let you do it. I got, I, I've destroyed it. We're gonna take two pulleys. Okay, and hook that up, that arrangement. Yes, One there. You guys are getting good at this. I'm, we're gonna get you a job as a rigger. You know what a rigger is? No. He's the guy that uses all these pulleys and simple machines to pick things up, and, and you may only need a little longer string. That's why we have several pieces of string here. You know? All right, now, Ronnie, what what is what is this spring scale read now? What how much force does it take to hold up the load? Hundred. Hundred. All right. Well, the scale is probably off a little bit. It's, it's about hundred and twenty. All right, which is half half the weight of the load. Mm -hmm. Right. So, what's our what's our mechanical advantage? Mechanical advantage. Right? Yeah, mechanical advantage. Right. If it's three. It's, if it's two, it's half the load. Right. So, right now, our mechanical advantage is two. We went from that real simple thing, which had a mechanical advantage to, of two, to this very complex arrangement with a mechanical advantage of three. Is it three? Right. Yeah. One. No, two ones. All right, how many strings are holding up the load? Three. Three? One, two, three. 
You sure? One of it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you do. You have three. Right, I'm sorry. All right, so you have three, right? So it's one, about one-third of, <coughs> one of the force to required to hold it up. So it's about 100, a little less than 100. So we have three. What if we, what if we were to take and let me, let me take this ring that we have here very quickly. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change it for you. Mm -hmm. where, where are we? You ready to go? Now we, um, we, right. and they, now now we then, switch it around. I mean, we, just switched, we just switched it around, right? And so that now then, I've got, still have two pulleys, right? I still have <coughs> my string scale down here. I still have my load here. But now then, how many strings are holding up the load? Three. How many? Two. Three. Two. So what's the mechanical advantage? Two. Two. Well, before we had three, right? We turn it over like this, okay? And what we're doing is we decreased the mechanical advantage, and what we did is basically we changed the direction which our force was being applied to input in the machine. Okay? Before it was up, and all three strings were holding the load. Okay, so depending on how we configure our pulley system, we can get all kinds of mechanical advantages. I have another one over here. I have some pulleys. Actually, I got one, two, three. I have, actually, I have seven pulleys, right? No. If I were to take this and put my load down here like this, right, on it, what's my mechanical advantage? Um, seven. Seven? Yeah. Got one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. Seven. Seven, right? That would be my mechanical advantage. Right? So <coughs> if this weighed 700, I've had a load down here with 700 pounds. How many pounds have I had to pull to hold it up? Half. No, seven. Mechanical advantage is seven. Seven into 700 is what? Seven into seven is what? One. So it would be. I'd have to have 100 pounds pulling down on it. Now then, if I take it and turn it over, right, and I put the load down here, now then how many strings are holding it up? Six. Yes, no, it's still seven. Still seven? Those, those seven there, plus what's this one doing over here? Eight. It'd be eight, so my mechanical advantage is now eight. All right, so we can, what we've, what we've just shown is we can take and we can use pulleys to lift big heavy loads depending upon and how much force we have to put in to lift a heavy load is depending upon the mechanical advantage that we have. Okay. And what's the one thing that's going to add a little bit to the effort we have to put in? When we first started out, what did we do? Mm -hmm. first we this pulley, this mm -hmm. pulley has what? Okay, let me get one that doesn't have a string on it. Right? What's this pulley got in it? Uh, um, What's the word? It says for nothing. What's the word? Heat. Um, it has heat. Well, it, well they're uh, generating heat, but what's the word? Deluxe. Friction. Friction, yeah, right? Not. It's the thing that's going to cause it to slow down, right? Because of the friction in there on the little bearing and the pulley. And this not being a very good pulley, it's going to slow down pretty, pretty quick. Right? Friction is the thing that allows you to get to school in the morning because mm -hmm. if you didn't have friction, you wouldn't be able to walk, right? I mean, if you did get gone, right, without friction when you got here, you wouldn't be able to stop. And you'd be all sad and disappointed, right? Wouldn't you? If, you? if you couldn't get to school in the morning and you couldn't stop when you did get here, you'd really be disappointed. I know, I can tell. You're, you're either than you're laughing at me, right? So. <coughs> All of the simple machines have friction. Have some friction in them, including these pulleys. And they're they're very useful. You, almost everything we work with has some some sort of pulley in it. Like your automobile, right? Has a couple pulleys in the engine, right? To make the fan turn, and the water pump go, and run the water through the engine to cool it. Right? Uh, elevators have pulleys that make raise the the cage and the elevator up and down, right? So they're very useful, simple, simple machine. All right, that's it for today. 
It can go home and if you don't have to have a pulley that really turns like this, right? You could use a round stick or something, piece of metal, whatever, anything that you could put a rope around or a piece of string around and fasten down some way so you could pull on it and lift loads. All right, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the show and we'll see you next week. So